I've played Arceus V-Star at almost every major event in the last two years, so you don't have to. UV Max just won Hartford, Connecticut's regionals, also at that event, was the most Arceus we've seen in many, many major events. Uh, maybe, I mean, nothing's coming close since, since that season with its release, I feel like. Uh, We'd have to dive into the statistics to, to know for sure. But I mean, it's it's more than we've seen in a long time. Uh, Mew, I think many Mew players would feel that they're favored into Arceus. I think in general you, you are, uh, but there's a lot an Arceus player can do to make that matchup better. Uh, I wanted to share some of the, the ways that I've beat Mew a lot over these last two years, things that I've picked up about the matchup and why I think it is definitely still a choice for uh, Milwaukee. And if I was an Arceus player I, that just played it at Hartford or was was ready to use it at Milwaukee, but kind of hesitant seeing the success of Mew, I wouldn't throw it out just, just yet. Uh, so looking at Mew versus Arceus moving forward, first I want to kind of look back. Um, one of my first big finishes with Arceus V-Star was at Indianapolis Regionals uh, in the 21 to 22 season. So it was right at the end of that season. And I was able to get top 64 with an Arceus Lycanroc VMAX deck. Um, what started as kind of a meme turned out to be a little better than I than I had even thought. I loved the deck. I loved um, the Hunting Claw. I loved that 60 KO. I loved so much about it. Um, a European player named Josh, I, I saw he got top 64 at something with the deck and I thought I could make some changes, make it my own. And... Uh, maybe make it better. And, and yeah, I loved it. Uh, so for context, this variant played a 1-1 Crobat VMAX. So you dark gas set with your basic, and then it wasn't dead under Marnie Path. I could evolve it and attack with it. I also played the Hoopa V. So the goal with that deck at that time in the Mew matchup would be to, to get your Hoopa V down and your Crobat down. So you've got two dark attackers. I could split the energies. And then even if they boss the one with the two energies, you're a Raihan away from attacking. Uh, with that dark type, preferably you're going up with the Crobat VMAX as that's often impossible for them to KO with, with power taps. I think that archetype is very comparable to Arcdura Umbreon. Um, although you're lacking the path, uh, your ability to discovery and get multiple Umbreons down to, to evolve the one that they, they don't KO, um, I think is very comparable. And with that specifically, Umbreon's attack cost allows it to attack uh, from only a dark energy, as you could go double turbo, choice belt, and get that attack off. Uh, so I think it's pretty comparable. So when I'm comparing what Arceus used to look like to what it could do moving forward to the Mew matchup, I think it's definitely alike enough to, to see, okay, if, if Arceus was able to win games against Mew back then, it definitely can moving forward. Uh, so again, those were the dark attackers I played. I started with a win-loss tie to Mew. Uh, a few of these, I'll note the players' names, just to kind of add a little bit of credibility to, to, to what happened, saying like, okay, that person probably didn't just misplay horribly. I mean, it's it's a good Mew player playing Mew seriously. So as you can see, this was one of my deepest runs ever, and I and I hit day two uh, Caleb Gedimer and, and Cal Connor. So it wasn't a joke. They weren't playing around. They were very serious. Um, but I, I yeah, so I tied a Mew. I felt okay in that matchup, just I think a mixture of they were playing a little slowly, I was figuring out the day, uh, and then I hit it again for my winning in, and I was so nervous. I mean, my winning in, and it's Mew, and we all know you know you can just get Mewed. Um, they could donk you, and I remember thinking that as it was the Fusion Strike variant on the winning in. So uh, I don't recall him hitting Elisa's. I don't think that happened to a three. Otherwise, my run probably would have been cut short. Uh, but they do they do whiff it. Um, you go second you know, at least one of those games in the series. And, and when you do that, you've got that Marnie path potential and that can help throw off the combo that they need. Uh, yeah. So I was able to do it day two. I hit Cal Connor and Caleb Gettimer. I remember Caleb Gettimer. He didn't play a game. I felt I didn't really play a game. And then game three, I just really managed the bench well. Um, and that's what you've got to do. And so that's a lesson that we're going to learn kind of moving forward. What you can do as an Arceus player, you've got to Get your Vs down turn one and then evolve them up later and you avoid the horn and you don't bench new Vs. I mean, you can't give them those easy gust targets and you're just going to disrupt, disrupt, disrupt and make them find those tablets every time when they need it. Uh, I think in general, they will whiff. They're going to whiff those KOs. Um, provided you don't misplay, provided you, you don't have to play into Echoing Horn and then you pair that with something like a Sharon's and it's off and game over. Um, the Kel Connor game, I will never forget it. Uh, I was so happy to pull out game one. Game two, he exploded. 
I scooped early, we get to a game three and it's going beautifully. And unfortunately I just misplayed. I got tunnel vision. I didn't look at the Oracle on the bench. I just had to grab choice belt for a game. Um, I grabbed starboard targets. I shuffled. I see it. I, I almost go to rechange those targets. He holds me to the shuffle saying that's ended the search. I don't fault him for that. That's I, I'm pretty sure that's exactly how it's supposed to play out. Uh, so what could have been a three, uh, Oh one mu day and maybe a top 16 is unfortunately cut short by, by Cal and then the run there, but that's okay. Uh, two one, one is very good. I think in the, in the mu with a deck like this an evolution deck like this, um, in general, a lot of decks don't do better than 55% win percentage. And so in the mu, this is, this is that, um, a little better than that. Another Arceus deck I tried was Arceus. Agron VMAX, by far the funnest I've had playing Pokemon at a major event. This deck is awesome. Um, I picked it up because of Adam Hawkins' result at uh, Worlds. Don't remember the year that this was, I would assume, right before this. Yeah, Worlds 22. Um, gosh, it was cool. I felt like I could make a couple of changes. One of, one of the ones I remember was playing a Collapse for the Reggie's matchup. Uh, Muse Dicey. So this one, I've got no Dark Attacker. You're really banking on Agron's large HP and its ability to Oko anything. Um, for me, that was enough. Uh, I would say I got pretty fortunate not hitting it day one. Of all the Arceus decks we'll look at, I think this one took the rockiest Mew. Um, but again, your aggrons are so thick. I played two big charm, um, pretty good. Uh, or a big charm, pretty good. Um, I hit two DTE Mews and it's it's difficult to, to see how that could translate as the, the Fusion Strike Mew would probably be even more unfavored, but the point stands. This one was four Marnie, four path kind of a thing, or three path, and you can see a game it worked, a game it didn't. That's on on its face, just kind of the basics of, to me, the matchup. It's just like, if you live past turn one, then you don't throw moving forward, like putting Vs in play. If you just get to evolve, you can do it. You can for sure do it. Again, like I said, you're disrupting them the whole time and you're making them have those tabs. Um, in this with this style of deck, that's exactly what I was trying to do. I figure, hey, I'll play fast. I will use the clock correctly, get in my three games, and not bench fees in the mid game, not 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 research them away, you know, give them those echoing horn targets. We're gonna disrupt, make them need the tablets. As with Agron, you need a lot of tablets. Uh, it worked a game, it didn't a game. Yeah, moving on. Uh, the final one I wanted to look at, Arceus Giratina V-Star, I played it. This is Astral Radiance format. We didn't have you know, Scarlet Violet. This is this is when it was still uh, definitely rogue. Arteen at this time. I mean, a couple notable players picked it up here and there. Cyrus Davis. Um, you know, like you can see my mirror counter Lavelle. People were playing it, but but I mean, it wasn't. It was never going to be a graphic deck. Uh, people didn't quite see it as good enough. Everyone thought it had a Rocky Mew, a Rocky Palkia. I didn't. I felt good. Uh, so I started the day with a win and then I hit uh, my first Mew with Sam Chen. So this is what I mean by noting some of these names. It's it's pretty unlikely that these players are, are you know, completely throwing. Um, and I remember that game with Sam, it was great. Sam's one of the, the best opponents I've ever played. Uh, sure, skill-wise, but I mean, just demeanor, attitude. Um, I felt like it was just, everything was happening, it w was so clear. Um, it was a great series. I, I really think the tie could have gone my way. I think we were both playing very cautious. Uh, it was early. We had that win. We didn't want to, you know, start on a downtrend. So we were just kind of both gauging, like, do I? Am I trying to play for a tie, or am I actually trying to take it? Um, he was go going just slow enough. Um, I don't mean in his actions, just like missing little pieces here and there to not steal the game that he was unsure, and that I wasn't quite taking, uh, uh, capitalizing on that enough. Um, so yeah, if we, if either of us felt more confident, we probably could have finished that into a dub. I think by the end of things, I probably felt better about it. Uh, but anyway, a tie, uh, it's fine. That goes either way. Clean dubbed Mew back to back. You love to see that. So I know I went second. One of those, uh, didn't matter. And then I hit a Mew, uh, day two, Andrew Ramey, um, American dad on Twitter, just unreal character, treasure of the community. The dude rules. Uh, we had a blast. It was a good, it was a good one. He's an awesome opponent. Um, yeah, he played super well and super hard. And I just kind of, like I mentioned, you disrupt and you make them have the tablets, you make them have the tablets. And unless they get, you know, so lucky with Silene or just, just really foresee exactly the modifiers that they'll need. Um, 
they probably won't be pulling it out. I think a lot of Mew players are playing that matchup going like, they'll have to discard a V at some point. I'll be able to gust a V at some point. Uh, and as the Arceus, you just can't ever give them that. And if you don't, you're going to be sitting pretty. So that one was a very successful uh, Mew run at 201. Um, and so again, for that to be the closest to the archetype we've got today, that's incredible to me. That's not a reason, you know, Rowan, Rowan winning is, doesn't look like uh, I'm not going to play Arctina moving forward. I mean, that's not the nail in the coffin for the deck. Clearly, uh, the deck was was fine then. It's better now. I would I would argue this variant. I did not play Drapion. I just told I just said I was going to disrupt him. Well, now we've got V guards as well. Um, so better, uh, better I would say. So wrapping it up with a few talking points here. That's five two two across my regional. Uh, experiences into Mew with Arceus plus X. Um, when I say good for Arceus, that's cards or concepts the deck has going for it in the Mew matchup. Bad for Arceus, cards or concepts Mew has going for it in that matchup. I noted V-Guard uh, because that 5-2-2, two, two, that's without V-Guard, obviously. I was playing all capture energies at that time. Previously, Mew could go belt, power tab, power tab to hit 280. They can easily do that twice. That's 280, 280. That's two Arceus V-Stars. I used to need the HP of my VMAXs to try to disrupt that. With V-Guard, your V-Stars are given the HP of a VMAX. They can't go belt, tab, tab, belt, tab, tab, and take four prizes. V-Guard totally disrupts that. It also protects your basic Vs on the bench should you have to go that route in the mid game or early, uh, and they, they can't simply get the free gust KOs. It makes them need to start burning uh, those resources early all the more likely your next V-Guarded V-Star uh, lives uh, another KO as they had to burn that that burn that burn uh, modifier early. Uh, Judge Path, I mean, Marty Path, we, we knew has been, uh, people want to clown on it. You know, it's a meme. It's, it's not super, uh, <laughs> there's no skill expression there. It's good, but it is good. Um, Judge Path is the same thing. Uh, with Bibberol, it definitely is the same thing to me. I mean, it's just not that different. Again, HP and Sharon's kind of goes back to the V-Guard. But in general, 280 is better than a lot of 270 V-Stars. Something like Gudra, Escape Rope, I don't know. It just 280 plus V-Guard, high. You're making them need those tablets. And there, there's a very high chance that you were able to get multiple Vs down early, evolve them up a little later. And now every time they whiff a KO... You could maybe Sharon's that arc up, and then you don't rebench anything. You know you're gonna run the game with just your remaining guys on the bench. So that's why I've noted Sharon's. It's it's if if the logic is V guard may make them whiff. Well, you don't want the two two hit KO either. So picking that up and forcing them to uh, have it again on some new one is is just incredible. And then I put damage uh, output because I think specifically if we're looking forward, we're talking Arctina could be Arctur Umbreon, in which case points moot but for Arctina cleansing gloves belt your Tinas can hit 310 there's ways to bench two Tinas the one they don't KO evolve that one um, keeping it safe or Corio looks bad at times um, I don't think they're going to tech it for the Arctina matchup if enough other things warrant it they certainly could but that doesn't even make it that bad either. Plenty of games I've won before. You go 3-2-1 for a prize map. Um, the Oricorio being a very easy KO uh, because Oricorio will make their Mew Vs live a Nova hit. So now even basic Mews aren't free. Genesis aren't free. You can't boss two prizes. But if you take that Oricorio first, then you really can. So we know you're going to have to two-shot a Mew Max, But then you go the Oricorio. Then you go the Mu V or Genesect. So three, one, two, I should say. Um, bad, uh, Judge Path, <laughs> what's a pro is a con. You don't want to be Judge Path first. So moving forward, if Mu's going to be a player, I think Pumpkin's a serious consideration. A Vacuum is okay. I think that's not as good though. A Lost City or a Collapse could definitely go far. Collapse can do some stuff. A little bit to Mew, a little bit to Guardi, but it's a little more than annoying. Um, Sinnoh is another consideration as well. Lost City is probably your best option because it's so good to Starbirth Fort early in the Gardevoir matchup. Um, in this instance, it's just a bump to help you Starbirth. Um, that being said, it's not searchable. Again, if we're talking the Arctina uh, archetype specifically. So Pumpkin. Pumpkin could definitely be a consideration. All my Ar Arceus lists on... Uh, ex yes, all my Arceus lists on this list had the Pumpkin. I haven't played it moving forward as we lost incense, uh, excuse me, um, quick ball. 
but it could definitely warrant coming back. Uh, sure, you've got less outs to it, but it'd still ni be nice to know it's in deck, especially with Nest Stash than Incisors to draw into it potentially. Um, and it may be all you need to just Starbirth to stay in the game, Starbirth for Raihan, something like that. Echo Horn, you simply can't play into it. That's one of their biggest strengths. Uh, you're a four judge deck. I mean, and then if you're, and that's again Arctina, if you're Arctura, you're, you're, two judge, two Colrus. You just can't research those away. You can't ball search Pokemon away. You're going to be tempted to, but you're you're so much better off if you don't. And that's why I think Squovit is awesome. Nest dash him to the bottom. You're chilling. Uh, that's great. And then especially if you're not Nova-ing, you're not shuffling the deck, just just sh put them on the bottom and then play the game for a while. Try You know you don't need to shuffle draw. If at that point you've switched to Giratina V-Star or something, um, they're going to be chilling there. Meliodas is really tough. That single prizer is really tough. I'm looking at different silly techs to try to combat that as Arctina is uh, all a two prizer deck. There's definitely a consideration to adding a one prizer to have an immediate answer to the Meliodas. I'm looking at Miltank. I'm looking at Greedent. Uh, Squovit actually evolves. There's a Greedent that for a double turbo could do uh, enough if you scrap your whole hand. Can Arctina avoid that? I don't know. But it's worth considering. And then again, you've always got to be playing around these gust effects. Is boss very likely? Okay, you've got to get two Vs down. Uh, what does E-Rope do to your board state? We watched Rowan time and time again. E-Rope up, the only thing with the energy. You've got to get a basic pri uh, one prizer down. So I think there's some serious consideration uh, to adding more. Um, Squovit and two uh, B-Doofs is a start, but... All these things, like I said, Miltank and Dunsparce and Pumpkaboo, they're twofold there. There's the utility that they offer through their abilities, and just being a single prizer on the bench uh, is worth it to E-Rope that up. You obviously don't want them to take a prize, but your arc energy can't die. It cannot. You lose. <laughs> so having the single prizer to promote could definitely be well worth it. Uh, so I hope that is something for anyone considering Arceus moving forward. It's still top on my list uh, moving to uh, Milwaukee. I'm not scared of Mew. Um, it's not great, don't get me wrong, but uh, Lugia is Lugia's tough as well. Uh, yeah, there's some considerations. There's some considerations, but um, if anyone does well with Arceus, uh, DM me. Let's talk about it. And uh, I hope to see all of the friends, all of them at uh, Milwaukee.